Hello, welcome to this lesson in the Linear Algebra Tutor. Up until this point, we've reviewed a lot of material that you probably have been exposed to in other classes at one form or another, but we're kind of recasting it in this realm of linear algebra. For instance, we talked about vectors a minute ago in the last section, and we talked about how they're really just uh, the same concept as these uh, guys called intuples, which are just listings of numbers. And the fact that we know how to take the dot product of two vectors really just translates to the regular old matrix multiplication rule that we already know from matrix multiplication. So start to get used to the idea of a vector basically being a matrix, a type of matrix, because in a moment we're going to be dealing a lot more with vectors in this class, and that's the connection, that basically vectors are simply matrices. Uh, if you're three-dimensional space, you'd have three components in that, in that column matrix there. Now, as you've probably guessed up till now, a lot of linear algebra is basically dealing with definitions and making those connections clearly like we've been doing in the last section. So in this lesson, what we're going to do is just go over a few more special types of matrices. Very, very simple, but I want to make them bulletproof and very easy for you to understand. The first one is called an identity matrix. We're going to be dealing with identity matrices all throughout this class uh, in your problems and also in proofs and things like that. So let's go and talk about the concept of an identity matrix. Very, very simple. Um, the identity matrix, identity matrix, the way you usually see it represented in a linear algebra book is the capital I with a subscript N. You'll understand what the N means in just a second. If I have an identity matrix, I sub 2, see notice in this case n is equal to 2, then it looks like this. Basically it means a 2 by 2 matrix with the number 1 along the diagonal elements and z rows everywhere else. All right. So the identity matrix is a general term. You can have an identity matrix for 2 by 2, for 3 by 3, for 4 by 4, for 5 by 5. So that's why we have the number, uh, the letter N there telling you that you can generate an identity matrix of any size, but it's always going to be a square matrix. So here's the identity matrix I sub 2. Uh, and the, the way that you construct it is you have 1s on the diagonal, zeros everywhere else. Now we can also have, for instance, an identity matrix I sub 3. What do you think that would look like? Well, it's going to be 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1. Notice in this case we have 1s along the diagonal, zeros everywhere else on the off-diagonal elements. And you can kind of continue on. You can make I sub 4 and I sub 5. In each of those cases, you'll have 1s along the diagonal elements and zeros everywhere else. That's what an identity matrix is. So if you ever see I sub n running around a proof or a theorem in your linear algebra book, just replace it with this concept of an identity matrix with ones on the diagonal. 